friends. I think the first thing I would like to do is to compliment SKG's family for this whole gathering and for giving us a brief summary of, from, by way of photographs of uh, his life. I say this particularly because it's quite some time since he passed away, but in spite of that, for the family to gather so nicely here and even to think of getting up this function it is quite a great thing. I say this particularly because only the other day I had my grandson coming to me and very surprisingly saying to me, Tata, I believe you played cricket for India. <laughs> so that's, that's what happens as uh, generations go. Things are forgotten or not even known because uh, 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 we are not, many of us, we are not people who talk about it afterwards. And uh, sometimes you find that your own family is quite unaware of what you've done in life. So I must compliment, uh, compliment Mr. Balakrishnan and all his family for getting this wonderful function to felicitate him on his 100th birth centenary. I must say, um, I always called him Guru. And uh, I see now that he joined the Hindu in 1928. This was before I was born. But what I would like to share with you is that Guru um, traveled with me on two tours, one to England in 1952 and another one which we did to Pakistan in 1959. And when we went to England in 1952, I was uh, 22 years old, um, somewhat young to be very uh, clever and um, perhaps not very um, generally at that age if something happens um, something happens that you think is unfair you tend to become very shocked about it agitated and um, aggressive I'm so glad that Guru was with me on that tour because on that tour, there were many an occasion when um, I felt that I had to be aggressive. And it was he, he was a mentor to me. I, I went to him with various problems that I had. And he heard me, he gave me a long time, and he advised me what I should and what I should do. Particularly, I, I would like to mention a couple of occasions. I have never talked about this. Uh, after that tour, but perhaps in a gathering like this when we are talking about Guru Nanak and, and, and how Guru Nanak kept me under uh, leash. There was a time, um, as you all know, I'm talking of more than 55 years ago, and that was a time when not many people from the South were able to get into the national side. Um, on the 52 tour, I was the only chap from the whole of South India. And um, uh, at that time, we were all, we were talked about in a rather contentious, this Madarasi. Uh, Madarasi was a club that was used. And um, to be, as I said, I've never complained about this, I've never spoken much about it before, but I think on this occasion I, I could. Uh, cricket was dominated, controlled by mainly from Bombay. And you could almost say that they felt that a Madrasi had no business to be 
being driven to start with or to be selected to an Indian side. And uh, so it was a bit hard going when you go on a tour for, the tour was five and a half months of uh, six days of cricket a week. Hard, tough, because uh, in those days we never played six days cricket in India. But in England you played six days of cricket, it was tough. Conditions were tough. And uh, you were touring in a country that you had never been to before. And cricket-wise, it was very, very difficult in England. Uh, those were the days when wickets were not covered. If it rained, it rained, and you had to play as soon as it started drying. There were no helmets to wear to protect yourself. In fact, compared to today, there were no, no gear whatsoever that protected you from getting hit or hammered or whatever. And uh, conditions were tough. And uh, one needed a lot of guidance on how to go about it. But being the lone guy from Madras, South India, that kind of guidance didn't really come forward very much. And um, there was an occasion when um, I was told uh, by the captain uh, to move on the ground, uh, come closer or move to your right or left. In Hindustani, very clearly he knew I didn't know Hindi. And uh, so I didn't know, I didn't do this. And he got very angry and upset with me that I wasn't uh, concentrating on the game and following. So I was hauled up to his room, the hotel, and I was told, uh, look, this is no good. You're not attentive, you're not. I said, Captain, I'm looking at you. But you spoke in Hindi, and I think you know I don't know Hindi. So I didn't know what you're saying. So I had to wait for somebody to direct me to do whatever uh, you wanted me to do. So he said, no, that's, that's no excuse. I said, I'm not giving an excuse. I'm just telling you, I didn't know what you wanted me to do. Well, it's, it's time you learned some Hindi too. Uh, I, said, I said, but why? I mean, uh, why? you could have told me in English and I would have done whatever you wanted me to do. By this time, I was getting a bit hot about the whole thing. And then he said, but if I told you in English, the batsman would know that I am moving you somewhere. So at that point, I was not very clever. I said to him, but I thought we were playing cricket. The batsman should know where the fielders are. So he got very upset. He got very angry with me. He said, this is not Madras cricket. So I got equally upset. And I said, look, I play only one cricket. Whether it's Madras cricket or India cricket, I play cricket. So if you want to talk to me, if you want me to understand something, you've got to talk to me in English. I have no intention of learning Hindi. It's not cricket. It's not cricket. <laughs> so you, if you want to talk to me, you talk to me. And I was very, very upset. As I say, um, it was not very clever to have uh, argued with the captain because uh, on a tour, the captain either makes you or mars you. Uh, but then, when you're 22, you don't you don't get to, you don't think about those things, and you speak up. So of course, uh, I, I I I just walked away, and I said, "You want to speak to me? You speak to me in English. Otherwise, I'm not interested." So of course, I went straight to Guru, and I said, "Look, this is what happened. I was very upset." And I was going to do X, Y, and Z and would object and take it up strongly. Guru calmed me down, put me, you know, uh, told me, um, don't get excited, sleep over it, we'll talk about it tomorrow. The next day he gave me a lot of good advice to say that I should not be doing things that I wanted to do, to uh, object to all this. And um, so perhaps. If I did what I wanted to do, I might have been sent back like Lala Amarnath would send back. 